hands together, right? Yeah. May 17th was World Hypertension Day. We're continuing our education, our information, our transformation. Hypertension, know your BP, control it, live longer and healthier. Picky classic. I've got them seated, seats in the upright position. Definitely they're not smoking. And I don't think they need seat belts. Wing Commander Doctor Benjamin Tobo and Dr. Dr. Sajin Bonsu, physician specialist. They're with us, they're teaching us, guiding us when it comes to hypertension. What is it? What does it do? How does it come about? You've got questions, concerns. WhatsApp is 055 We're live on Facebook and YouTube. Docs, you're most welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I, did, I didn't see you stomping. I mean, when I do my Kirk Franklin, I like to stomp him. Eh? Um, oh, we were nodding our heads. <laughs> you were nodding your heads. Okay, good, 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 good. Great to have you. How, how's your Sunday been? It's been pretty long. Oh, I see. On duty? Yes. Oh, sh- Wow. So I had to go into airplane mode so I don't get calls for us at one day. Oh, right, 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 right. So, uh, listeners, we're, we're blessed to have him. Dorcas. Yes. You're also on airplane mode? People calling you? No, I'm good. You're good. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, last week we learned what hypertension was, okay? Uh, a more or less chronic condition of elevated blood pressure. We explained to our listeners what uh, the pressure in your arteries really represents okay Mm -hmm. when your heart pumps blood around the body there's a certain pressure okay Mm -hmm. when it relaxes between pumping or between beats there's another pressure Pressure these numbers we were made to understand are critical yes right and they have an impact on our health Mm -hmm. so there's a normal or normative blood pressure Mm -hmm. which is generally uh, considered to be universal. If your heart is healthy, your system is healthy, it should fall within a certain range. Yes. Then we have a cutoff or a threshold for elevated blood pressure. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. last week we said equal to or above 140, 90. Yes. Right? Uh, systolic, diastolic. Okay? Now, coming back and building on our discussion from last week, you know, and it, probably you'll agree with me, in some charts and in some literature and education on hypertension, we have what we know as pre-hypertension, mm-hmm. hypertension stage one, stage two, and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Some of my listeners got to me and said, well, okay, the 140, there's a one a little below that, yes. right? Before you get to the 140, and mm-hmm. some also say, well, the 140 in other charts is established as stage two or level two or grade two hypertension. Can we mm-hmm. clarify some of these uh, levels or cutoffs and grades or uh, should I say stages of hypertension? Okay, so there are several guidelines. We have the European um, guidelines and we have the American guidelines. Okay. Okay. And um, in both guidelines, a blood pressure measurement of systolic of 140 mm-hmm. and a diastolic of 90 or above mm-hmm. is hypertension. It's hypertension. Yeah. The terminologies that are different uh, is between... So we usually say the normal blood pressure is 120, Over 80. 80. Right. Yes. So that means between 120 and 140, what is it? Mm-hmm. If you're in 122, 130, 139, exactly. So there are some who say it's elevated blood pressure. Okay. Some will say it's pre-hypertension. Okay. Whatever it is, it's not normal. It's not normal. Yes. And we like to do these classifications because it helps in our management. We may want to delay drug therapy at this stage. Okay. And do lifestyle modification to see if your BPs will normalize okay. to normal before it's established hypertension. Okay. But there's no confusion that 140 over 90 is hypertension. hypertension. And then again, there is grading after that. We have 140 to 159 systolic. We have 160 to 179 systolic. Joy. And we have 180 and above. Okay. Um, it helps to risk stratify the patients. Okay. So if I have a patient whose BP is 
140 to, between 140 to 159. Mm -hmm. We will say maybe that's stage one. Right. Then between 160 to 179, we'll mm -hmm. say that's stage two. Okay. 180 and above is stage three. Right. If I have a patient who is coming in with a BP of 180 and above, mm -hmm. that is a patient that I'm going to be very aggressive in my management with. Okay. Because it's more associated with cardiovascular events at that stage. Okay. So that's the, the essence of the risk classification right. and then the um, variables or the different nomenclature. Okay. Right. So if you're driving and you're speeding, uh, 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 we have a speed limit. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. uh, you can be various uh, degrees above or below that speed limit, mm -hmm. right? So we are not confused. If you're speeding, you're speeding. Yes, exactly. right. But there are degrees of this, mm -hmm. exactly. and these degrees have an import on your health. Coming back to hypertension yes. and your numbers, yes. and the reason why we should firstly measure, monitor, and know determine these numbers yes. Yes. okay we're not in business if we don't know this at all mm -hmm. right we the, you know anything that can be measured can be managed yes, yes. you have not measured you are not <laughs> in the business of management mm -hmm. of any sort mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. be it uh, lifestyle or whatever yes. okay so part of the uh, drive the advocacy the awareness is to make sure people are checking their blood pressure yes. and then they can relate it to the systems and the schemes and the meaning okay sure. thank you yes. now uh wing commander right hmm. in uh airplane mode right <laughs> um, he, um okay so we said that well many people most people listening to us are not aware of these numbers mm -hmm. have not measured and indeed in most cases hypertension is asymptomatic it doesn't show any signs or symptoms Okay, but we mentioned last week that whether it shows signs or symptoms or not, if you are suffering from elevated blood pressure, there's damage ongoing. Oh, yes. Okay, can we hit on that again? Because I, I'm, I'm taking that to mean that these markers or degrees of hypertension are used to benchmark your risk profile, yes. like Doc has just said. Yes. So, yeah. so let's come back to that. Even though I don't have symptoms, I think I'm fine. Okay, some two known, three known, five known doctor goes or somebody in a pharmacy takes my measurement and say, hey, you are not fine. Mm -hmm. I don't get it, right? Can we relate that, go over that again, the damage that is going on? Yes, uh, for the target organs that um, suffer because the sure. blood pressure is increasing, mm -hmm. um, because the hypertension itself is asymptomatic, mm. there are changes that happen within the blood vessels okay. as the pressure keeps increasing. Right. And then in those target organs, because the blood pressure, um, the, the blood vessel is narrowing, mm. One target organ, like the heart, has to work extra hard to counter that increased pressure right. in order to deliver blood to the rest of the body. And as the pressure increases, then it means the workload on the heart also increases. Okay. So what happens is that the heart then has to bulk up its muscle. You know, the muscle of the heart um, walls thicken. Right. And the blood supply to that heart doesn't increase as a result of that. Mm. So it's like a child that is growing up, yet his food supply is still the same. Mm. As he grows up, now there will be a deficiency because the food is not matching his growth. Right. So the heart itself will not have blood supply to itself mm. matching the increase in the heart size. Okay. So very soon, because of that um, 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 mismatch, the heart muscle starts to suffer. And that is when the person starts having symptoms from the damage that uh, hypertension does to one of the target organs like the heart. Like the heart. So then the symptoms start okay. after a heart attack has occurred. Mm -hmm. But you don't, we don't want people to get to that level. And even before the heart attack, uh, the damage you're talking about has, has taken place. Yes. It's ongoing. So whether heart muscle or heart structure and therefore, uh, subsequently, heart function mm -hmm. is changing and being compromised. It's going on. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? You may not have had the direct symptoms uh, overtly, mm -hmm. but if we check, and from knowing that you have hypertension, now we will check. Oh, yes. 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 And we must check. 
right? exactly so it's, sometimes you be told uh, you have this uh, challenge with your heart muscle or this and that and that and that mm -hmm. and it's likely that hypertension is a culprit oh yes mm -hmm. okay because the studies have linked the severity of the hypertension mm -hmm. with the, uh, the extent of damage to those target organs so once you you have been diagnosed with hypertension one of the things that we do is to screen for target organ damage mm -hmm. because it will allow us to risk stratify you so that if you are in a higher risk of patients then our treatment modalities will also be more aggressive in order to prevent that um, damage to um, um, from continuing and right. leading to an end stage uh, uh, organ damage uh, okay. state right we're talking about hypertension the station the dial of distinction and discernment is joy 99.7 fm the program is ultimate health your ultimate guide to healthy living listen every sunday 205 with me not by nature my uh fellows in cardiology are in the studio they are physician specialists they're already specialists so but they are getting a bit more too known eh? Uh, but what we're talking about is important. Your, 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 your vascular, your circulatory system and your blood pressure, hypertension, okay? We had them last week. We're doing a bit of tidying up so that you get to know what they're doing. They'll share with us also before they leave the studio what they're doing as part of this May month of measurement, mm -hmm. right? As the society or the Ghanaian society of what? Cardiology. Cardiology. Hey. Hmm. <laughs> uh, putting pressure on my heart, though. But anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, 055 11 11 997. We're live on Facebook and YouTube, and shortly I will activate the phone lines Joy. as well. Right. So we've understood this. It, same can apply to my kidney, my heart, and so on and so Your forth. Eye, yes. My eyes, and so on. As a downstream consequence of elevated and uncontrolled sometimes unidentified mm -hmm. uh, undiagnosed mm -hmm. hypertension yes. mm -hmm. okay or poorly controlled poorly controlled so i've been identified i've been diagnosed but i'm in the stubborn ac academy <laughs> uh, i play games with uh, hooky with my medication and so on and so forth okay yes. docs let me ask this so yeah yeah i've been identified i've listened to norte and the doctors i've i've been diagnosed okay mm -hmm. uh I, I i i i i have my blood pressure under control okay and i think that's cool i'm fine so what's this business about needing to take my medication or needing to keep the control especially if it is drug control in place for life docus Yes, so um, it's controlled. What Joy. is controlling it? That's the question most people don't ask themselves. Okay. Yeah, I think we keep making noise about hypertension not being um, curative, as it's not like a bug that you've caught that will give you some medication to clear it's the bug. It's not infectious. It's not infectious. And so we'll say, well, you've treated the infection, you're good. Hypertension is managed. Mm -hmm. It's a chronic condition. Chronic conditions come with a whole lot of um, psychological distress and all that, all right. such that um, most people need to be understand, mm. be counselled, be encouraged to continually take their medication mm -hmm. because if you stop the medication, you are back to square one. Okay, you are back to poorly controlled or uncontrolled. You are the same as someone who has not been diagnosed. You are leaving and, it to chance, and the damage is ongoing. Right. So if you've been diagnosed your own treatment is under control that's beautiful you have to keep the control mm. and the only way you keep your control is adhering to the treatment plan mm -hmm. that you have with your physician okay uh, whether it's both lifestyle and medication or one of them okay right 24 minutes past the hour of two joy. on joy 99.7 fm with me not by nature the program is ultimate health your ultimate guide to healthy living we're talking about hypertension we want you to know your bp after knowing it we want you to control it manage it and live longer and healthier that's the message may month of measurement know your numbers there are the numbers your sugar your cholesterol your bmi we talked about them actually yes. last week we talked also about risk factors and some possible uh, causative relationships huh? mm -hmm. some things that can be uh, familial or inherited uh, others which are uh, modifiable or not modifiable, mm -hmm. right? We heard that, hey, if you're a man, you're more at risk, right? 
Yes. Yes, and so on. So you can't change your sex. Uh, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> tongue in cheek. You can't change your sex, <laughs> right? Okay. And even if you do, I think this uh, diathesis will still be there, yes, right? Biological. Even if, yeah, biological diathesis mm. or disadvantage, right? Um, so those are the things you can't change. But sometimes we know there are other factors. Yes. Which you can change, in fact, which are at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you may be identified and diagnosed with hypertension. And there are a range of interventions or management strategies that are lifestyle related and therefore indicate and instruct or direct lifestyle modifications. Let me bring my guest to talk about that. Remember, phone lines uh, will be activated shortly. Yeah? It's about 25 minutes past the hour, too. Right. So, yeah, when we start talking about lifestyle factors related to hypertension and we move from talking about them and understanding them to, to, to harnessing and mobilizing or managing those factors to uh, manage hypertension, what exactly are we talking about? Well, basically, because the treatment options for hypertension involve um, the uh, non-pharmacological options, mm -hmm. which target these lifestyle factors we hammer on them so through uh, patient education we let them understand that these lifestyle factors especially the modifiable ones can be targeted as an adjunct or as the the basis or the foundation for hypertension management. Mm -hmm. So if you are someone who has a sedentary lifestyle or you don't exercise frequently, then you are encouraged to start a, an exercise regimen okay. or an increased level of activity okay. to help in your hypertension control. If you smoke, then the smoking is encouraged to be stopped. It's know. modifiable. It's modifiable. It's a, choice. it's a habit, yes, okay. that you can stop. Tobacco is the only thing if you use according to manufacturer's instructions, you will die. Mm -hmm. Yeah? But you chose to buy it. You chose to smoke it. Exactly. Okay? And you're linking it to this condition, right? And you're being told, cut it down or indeed stop. Stop. Yeah. That is a lifestyle modification. Exactly. At your fingertips. Mm -hmm. Open to you. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And... Another one like heavy alcohol um, consumption mm -hmm. because you are given to consuming large amounts of alcohol and that puts you at risk of developing cardiovascular diseases and related diseases, Joy. then that lifestyle can also be encouraged to be modified. Mm. And high salt or sodium laden foods. Right. You know. And once you, you are the type that indulges in them because it's a choice, a, a habit that you can stop or you can modify, modify yep. then it becomes another target for hypertension management. Right. So that all those uh, help to control the blood pressure. Okay. And if we are unable to uh, meet our targets, then drugs come in. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. We're not insisting, maybe you clarify that for my listeners, mm -hmm. we're not insisting that, oh, we'll start you at kindergarten mm -hmm. with lifestyle no. strategies, okay? We're saying that we can separate or distinguish the management strategies into yes. the modifiable, right, or the lifestyle things we can target, mm -hmm. and then the drug-related intervention. Exactly. Okay, so either we're giving you medication or we think we can manage it by encouraging your discipline in this direction, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not that uh, if you be, you've been told by your doctor or your physician that uh, modify these things, exercise a bit more, it's not to say that your your, your problem is not serious, mm -hmm. right? No. Yeah? No. Okay, right. So I want my listeners to understand that. I've got this uh, from Emmanuel. He says, Naughty, please ask your guest. The reason why my BP drug causes me to uh, urinate uh, frequently, right? So he's relating that to his medication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of the medications do that. And we have what we call the diuretics. Right. Okay. And that one, it causes you to urinate to reduce the volume of fluid in your vessels. Because like I said last week, volume also goes with pressure. Mm -hmm. Like you have a balloon that you've blown. The mm -hmm. more, you know, sometimes we blow balloon and we fill it with fluid or yeah. water. Yeah. 
that exists, the bigger it is, the more pressure within that balloon compared to a smaller blown one with mm-hmm. less fluid. Mm-hmm. So, so another, a way of treating hypertension is reducing the volume of fluid in your vessels. Mm-hmm. And some of the medications causes you to urinate more. Mm-hmm. And so um, we talk to our patients, we explain the side effects. Some people, it bothers them, especially if they have to wake up at night to urinate so often. Okay. So if it's bothering you, you talk to your physician, we can tell you maybe take it in the mornings rather, mm-hmm. so that you need during the day and your night, your sleep is not disturbed. So okay. yeah, we right. around that. Okay, so we are managing your fluid, right? Mm-hmm. And the retention of fluid. And we may want to encourage your system to let some of that go. Yes. Yeah, so some of the medications work through that path or yes. on that path mm-hmm. and you may find that this is uh, should i say uh, in quotes collateral discomfort mm. but you are gaining something very 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 important exactly. right so that is why you pee a lot <coughs> dear Norte, uh i have listened to your program for quite some time now i do not know whether or not you have treated sciatica uh, sciatica on your program it's something worrying a lot of people including myself in fact i actually don't know whether it's it's that or not because i have neck spondylosis spondylitis and the pain from my waist and so on and so forth please can you invite a specialist to talk on the management of this on your program now we've had the chiropractic uh, uh in the studio we've done some other things uh, that uh have touched on this and we've had to touch on this uh, a couple of uh, programs back Okay, there's nothing wrong uh, in going back to look at this. So no problem at all, right? Uh, I know Dr. Nashele Dodo is celebrating uh, the Nova Wellness. Mm-hmm. It's their 10th anniversary. We will be having her back in the studio, but there's a range of specialties that deals with this as well. Yes. And the nerve and whether it's a disc that is pinching on the nerve and so on and so forth. So thanks for that. We'll see if we can do you the honors, but we're still talking about hypertension with my guests in the studio. Norte, please ask your guests. Okay, I've done that. If you have a question, concern, what's up? 055 And uh, we're going to activate 99.7 FM. The phone line 0302216541. Okay, so um, if I'm obese or overweight, again, I can be encouraged to start working on this yes. related to the management of my hypertension. Yes. All right. So I don't just uh, look at my physician and say, hey, my family, we are big. All right. <laughs> uh, that one, you can't change it. Okay. Mm-hmm. But now you're big eh? or in quotes, uh, eh, let me use a Ghanaian English, your bigness. <laughs> eh? We want it managed. We can't let it loose because now you have hypertension. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's what we're saying. Yes. Some people yes. say, hey, hey, yes, we are mm-hmm. big. Mm-hmm. Eh? All right. But um, you need to establish that link between what you want the person to do, right? Mm-hmm. And the health import of that modification. Yes. Okay. But some people feel, I mean, it's good to be big. Eh? Um, uh, people feel you arrived. You're, you're living good. <laughs> eh? uh, so does that message go down well, especially in our part of the world? So, I mean, yes, most people now, I mean, there's awareness. Mm. I mean, we've practiced for, I've been practicing for a while now. And okay. I think the message about obesity is getting across mm. now. So most people do want to lose some weight. Okay. Of course, it's never easy. And management of obesity is a topic on its own. Right. Mm. From diet, physical therapy to medications, mm. even surgery. So mm. you have to start somewhere and get some. Some people is frankly difficult. Okay. And they need to be have the full range of therapy available. Okay. So yeah, but I wanted to touch on the management lifestyle and then drug. Mm-hmm. Um, even if your medication, we still encourage Joy. the lifestyle. Yeah. So it's not yeah. as if A or B. Uh, mm-hmm. A always. A is there, like baseline, lifestyle yeah. baseline. Some people, most people need medication. Right. And then to stress on what you were saying, if your doctor has not said stop your medication, don't say, oh, I heard on radio that they said we can use lifestyle, so I'm stopping my medication. No. Mm-hmm. If you've been put on medication, you take it until your practitioner tells you that you can stop. If not, you don't stop. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. So it's not the case that, okay, I'm taking and I'm quite compliant with my medication, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So the control is there. Mm-hmm. So why are you worrying me about my alcohol, my weight, and other things? That's what Dorcas is bringing across. Yeah. Yeah? Okay? You still need to work on it. Yes. Exactly. 
we need the control yes okay so don't kid yourself that uh, i'm fine it's within this range so i can drink mm -hmm. right i can uh, smoke i can eat what i want and um uh, yeah it's salty but you see that's why I'm taking the medication, mm -hmm. right? So the salt and all that and its impact on my uh, BP is uh, counted it's by blunted. this. Right. I'm sure you get this kind of uh, logic from people. Oh, yes. They, yeah? they try to negotiate with you for a way out so they can continue living that kind of uh, risky lifestyle okay. whilst on medication. They want to live on the edge. Joy. Okay. <laughs> all right. We'll swing to the uh, drug treatment in a sec. But some of these complications, you mentioned a heart attack, heart failure, um, kidney issues, uh, stroke, stroke, and so on. Yeah. Very often, um, people don't want, they want to hear about the medication. They will call in and ask about BMI and so on and so forth because we haven't gone to stroke and those kind of things. Mm. Can we look at some of these uh, downstream, uh, very probable outcomes? Okay. Uh, I'm struggling. I don't have consistent control of my uh, blood pressure. Uh, so how does that lead to a stroke? Okay, so um, a lot of research literature has proven, Joy, mm, shown that increased FM. blood pressure mm -hmm. increases your risk of stroke. And practically we see it every day. So with stroke, it could be that the vessel burst mm -hmm. in your brain leading to a bleed. Or it could be that there was a a clot that blocked an artery okay. and then the blood supply to part of the brain was compromised. Okay. So the symptoms you see is basically due to a compromise in the blood supply um, supply to a part of right. the brain. brain yeah. Yes, all right. So if you're hypertensive, mm -hmm. your risk of getting a bleed in the brain or a clot in the brain is very high. Right. Because the vessels are thickened, are narrowed, there's, they may, there's usually deposits of cholesterol there such that the blood cannot go through. The cholesterol um, plaque can break off with a clot mm -hmm. and then go further down to the narrow parts of the arteries and block it. Okay. And then the blood supply is compromised. Okay. Or it's so thickened or that it, it ends up dilating or bulging and then it can best. So essentially, if we're electing candidates for stroke, if you have hypertension, you are in a comfortable lead. Oh, yes. Yeah? When 100%. it comes to all the things you're talking about, thickening of the arteries, this, that, 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 yes. that. You got it. Yes. You win, hands down. Oh, yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Unopposed. Competition. That is what our physicians are telling us. So yes. stop kidding with this. Yes. This is serious business, mm -hmm. right? So you haven't had a stroke yet. You feel you're fine, but the odds are tipped against you. Exactly. You are in a very comfortable lead. Yes. And indeed, the other candidates may step down. Eh, for you to have the stroke, <laughs> right? Uh, pardon my humor, but uh, sometimes I've got to get it across somehow, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's the serious business we're talking about, right? And you're dancing on the edge, literally playing Russian roulette mm. yeah. with your life, okay? Yes. So that is what the doctors are communicating. You can come in 030-221-6541, Ultimate Health on Joy 99.7 FM, with me uh, loud as usual, even with my husky and um, whatever voice, uh, not a by nature, right? The doctors in the studio, Dr. Dorcas um, Ajin Bonsu, right? She's with the Kolibu Teaching Hospital, physician specialist, and she's uh, upgrading herself beyond 5G, 6G, whatever, to become a cardiologist. Uh, she's a fellow in cardiology, as is her colleague next to her, Dr. Oh, sorry, Wing Commander Doctor. <laughs> eh? Okay? Yes, if you go to KFC, ask for Wings. He's in charge, right? Uh, Wing Commander Dr. Benjamin Tobo. He's with the 37 Military Hospital. He's also a physician uh, specialist and also pushing up there when it comes to cardiology. And he's also into, uh, where's the part I, lo I love? Military air crew medical examiner. Which one is that one? <laughs> Just quickly. Uh, uh, basically, we, we certify people who work in the aerospace environment, like mm. pilots, mm -hmm. uh, um, aircraft engineers, mm. and uh, anybody who has to be in that environment for a long time, we want to make sure that you are fit to fly. So you fly? 
You, no, you, you, I don't so, fly. You don't, I don't fly. fly. But I certify. Oh, but you're a wing fly. commander. <laughs> uh, that's a rank designation. So, I shall see, man. <laughs> All right. Okay. The rank is wing commander. Yes. Okay. Okay. And I can then, I can see you in a cockpit though. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. I mean, before you become a, a military aircraft examiner, you also have to go through you do the, all the training, the simulation, exactly, and all that, yeah? because you must experience that okay. to be able to manage those. Wait, stuff. Okay. He is here because of your BP. All right. Naughty by nature. Naughty by nature. No, it's naughty by nature. Don't don't mess around. Okay. How is it that I do a lot of fluids, but my pee is quite coloured, and I pee less than the volume I consume? Okay. Uh, it goes other places. It does other things. Yes, you perspire. He says, I don't I'm sweat too much. Measuring. Right? Uh, he's taking it in and he wants it to come out. Uh, <laughs> when it doesn't, he's worried. Uh, it's turning into ice cubes in your stomach. <laughs> Papa, I shall uh, For what is worth, he should get his kidney test done and let's be sure everything is fine. Let's but be I, sure. Yeah. Okay, let's be sure, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there's a system by which you produce urine. Okay, and it's related to your renal system and it's functioning as well. So the physician in the studio is telling us, have that checked anyway, okay? Yeah. Uh, you are not uh, trained and qualified to measure, mm. okay? So that's what it is. You've done your crude measure, you're worried, that's good yeah. enough, yes. okay? Let's move it further mm. to get you the relief and the answers you want. Hello, good, no, good afternoon, Norte. Kindly ask your resource personnel, what could account for one? mouth tilting to one side when one laughs or want to eat my left eye can't also blink i think is the word you want to mm. put normally like the right one and it keeps tearing tearing right what kind of sickness is this okay it's not related to the subject we're discussing directly is it or it's, it's talking about a neurological Con condition. Yes. condition yes. which so you have, to, have to check it out. Seen if by a has neurologist. Had a stroke yeah. before and okay. all that. We need more details. We need more details. Mm -hmm. Okay. The mouth so tilting the same the side muscle, as the eye. There's a reflex that is happening. Sometimes it's a twitch, but it could be related to other things. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so have that checked out properly. Uh, hello, I play tennis thrice a week, but my only challenge is my Saturday beer after tennis on Saturday. I want to change that lifestyle, but not easy. William, <laughs> I play tennis, so... Hmm. Uh, okay, since you've confessed on our behalf, right? Um, again, lifestyle modification, mm -hmm. you're, you're dealing with a physician, but you're dealing with your behavior, okay? Sometimes people like me come in, even though I play tennis and uh, I drink every now and then, all right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. you are modifying behavior. Lifestyle modification, you're modifying behavior. Mm -hmm. Some need more support and help and discipline than others. Yeah, yes. Okay? True. And of course, the people who will not mind you, who play with you, who are part of the stubborn academy, right? It's difficult to abstain from something when it's under your nose or indeed in your glass, okay? So sometimes for people, modifying behaviors means changing lifestyle and their social groupings mm. uh, or limiting them and restricting them that's where they have a difficulty so yeah. you tell people you stop smoking but you hang around with the people who still smoke right so uh you might need some extra help there all right i, I don't know whether you want to add anything to that i was just going to say that um the emphasis was on heavy alcohol mm -hmm. intake so um, i don't know how much alcohol you are taking mm -hmm. but then if you have self-control like we are mm -hmm. saying here and it's a unit a week, we are not going to chase you down. Charlie, when you are sitting with the people, sometimes you are not even the one buying. <laughs> yeah. That, is, not, that is where the problem is. Yes. Where, How much you are where boys, boys, boys gather, and then mm -hmm. a whole table has to be okay. wiped clean. Okay. You know, okay. That's so, where the problem yeah, comes. Yeah, it's, it, it's self reinforcing. Uh, and mm -hmm. Uh, you didn't buy, but it is there, okay? And uh, it's reinforcing socially, right? Yes. So you've got to be mindful of the power it has on your behavior and the relationship with your health, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Alongside what you're drinking there also is the, the, the salty kebabs and other things, which you, yeah. you've got to balance that as well. Exactly. Can you kindly throw some light on uh, your BP medication and being active? sexually as well being on your medication we talked you about that last that week thing. right uh francis wanted to know that oh i beg please let, let me finish reading before you move the thing okay thank you uh yeah okay francis gay wants to know that we talked about that last week mm -hmm. um hi naughty doc 
Cass reported me to her sister, Boahima, that I said, Arsenal, okay, okay, I won't mind you, Humphrey. <laughs> eh? Boahima will sort you out. All right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I measure my cholesterol. My name is Charles Chagley. I'm hypertensive and my BP level fluctuates between 140, 90, 135, 87. Always different levels. I'm on medication, but it scarcely goes down. It is difficult for me to go for a walk because I had an accident and I had a spinal cord injury. I do watch my diet, but still my pressure doesn't go down. So he's not achieving the control. Yeah. Uh, what should I do about this? I did measure my cholesterol and the doctor says that is okay. What else can I do? Quick one. Okay. So for him, if he can't add the life, the exercise bit, that's fair. Mm -hmm. What we may do is we may up titrate his dosing, okay, add on or give him um, a combination pill, right? So there are ways to control with um, without the exercise, okay? Right. So if he he's um, seeing a, like a a healthcare practitioner mm -hmm. consistently, and the BP has consistently remained not um, at target, right? then there's room for adding on medication or appetite treating what's going okay. on. All right, so there can be a review there. Good afternoon, Norte. How are you and your noble doctors? We're fine, we're fine, we're fine, 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 fine. Okay, thanks for adding me to the noble, noble uh, class. Eh? Please, you've spoken on causes of hypertension, including food that we eat, please. Is there a specific type of food stuff that causes it? Because for me, I like rice and gari with soup or stew, right? From Hayford in Bato, we specifically... Uh, identify sodium intake, salt intake, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, fatty foods and a few other things come up in discussion. But, Docs, what do you say to that? Is there anything he should be avoiding? So, we just advocate, I mean, high... Veg like more vegetables, more vegetables than more carbohydrates, like mm -hmm. a balanced diet, mm -hmm. but then cut down on your carbohydrates, your fried fatty foods, mm -hmm. Uh, more vegetables, more fruits. If you're not diabetic and mm -hmm. you have no other restrictions, right? Mm -hmm. But no specific, like don't eat the gari or no, okay. nothing like that. Just right. more vegetables. Okay. Yeah. And when it comes to health, less and less salt. Yeah, healthy eating. My dietitians always tell us it's more about your portions. Portions, right? Too. Not restricting specific things, but the portions and it's also important. the balance between the portions yes. and mm -hmm. the constituents. Carbohydrates, this, that, that, that. So be mindful of that. Please, should I take my BP and cholesterol drugs together or am I okay with the BP medication alone? Now, this suggests, this is not in law, suggests that they've been prescribed. Exactly. Okay. So you were told how to take them. But, Docs, any comment? Yeah, for, for medications, um, it depends on how they interact. So, uh, depending on which combination of BP medications and cholesterol medications they've been given, instructions are given on how to take them okay and uh, for most of the bp and cholesterol medications they tend Joy. to interact um, little oh, so yes. taking them together won't cause too much of a problem right but there are other medication classes that you can take them together okay. you have to space them hours apart or one at uh, one side of the day and one on the other side of right. the day so okay. For her, she once it's been given together. and prescribed, follow what your physician has prescribed. Okay, exactly. there are people who are taking their uh, what Cresto, their Exford, their this and that, and it's all in the same time space. I know I take my medication twice a day in case I forget my morning dose and realize the time is closer to the time I've been taking the medic medicine, exact example, 8 a.m. or 8 p.m., but I forgot and it's 12 noon. Can I take it the next? Can I take it and then take the next one around 10? So he's talking about missing it. Missing doses. And then shifting mm -hmm. yeah. the time he takes. Can he do that? It's allowable. It's allowable. What we will say is, but then go back to your regular routine by the next day. Routine and structure is good. Yeah. So if you need to set timers or alarms or whatever you need to do to okay. remember, do that. If it becomes too flexible, then we, we don't even know how and when you are taking exactly. it. Exactly. Right? Okay. And this is self-report. <laughs> a very uh, sensitive, touchy thing. Eh? Mm -hmm. I am telling you, I took it at this time. Okay, so be mindful of that. Okay, right. Uh, I think he's jumping up and down. I think his BP has gone up. Good afternoon, Norte. <laughs> I have been on Nova's ancestral five milligrams each for some time now, but because of the cost, the pharmacist suggested I take amlodipine and lisinopril. Any comments? Thanks, Ifwa Inusu. 
Right. You you you, you want us to we shoot touched that. on yeah. that last week. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's just mentioned trade names. Yeah. You know, those ones that have these um, proprietary names on them, they tend to be pricier. Mm. But a uh, lot of the generics are on the market. Mm -hmm. And no pharmaceutical company goes out to produce a product sure. that will not um, work. Okay. So a lot of the generics also uh, uh, have been found to be very um, effective. So if cost becomes an issue, our aim is to make sure that your blood pressure reaches target. So mm -hmm. you then have to move on to the generic and then you yeah. you take them. Okay. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, speaking of uh, pharmaceutical products, a generic must be effective. Mm -hmm. You can't issue a generic which is not effective. Exactly. Yeah. Generic just means that you didn't research and produce it. Mm -hmm. Okay. It doesn't mean that you're going to put uh, cocaine in and compress it into a tablet and people will take mm -hmm. and then you call it a generic mm -hmm. all right so that's what doc is saying okay mm -hmm. maybe when he said they've been found to be effective it might give you some people make these arguments okay mm -hmm. right and we have reason to check some of these things that's why we have an fda a standards board and all of those things but exactly. if it's out there as a genuine generic it is supposed to work exactly yes. all right Okay, that's what we're saying. Good afternoon, Norte. My BP of late is not stable. Please, what should I do? We don't know. You see, because we don't know why it's not stable. We don't know your profile. Uh, we don't even know if you're on medication or lifestyle modification. Send them, yeah. all right? But so she should yeah, see her doctor. See your doctor. And then they will put her on a BP uh, profiling mm -hmm. to yeah. know what uh, the trend of the BP is. Okay. And then if there is any uh, event that she will have to be recording, mm -hmm. then where the spikes occur and what happens during that time of day, yep. maybe some acute pain, maybe some stressful life event, mm -hmm. all those things are factored in. Okay. And then so that it's not just about pushing the drugs in yeah. to control it, but those lifestyle factors that may be okay. uh, influencing the blood pressure. They so can we need to get handled. a full understanding yes. of the context so of this instability in your BP. Exactly. Yes. All right. A friend of mine would say, oh, we're poverty. <laughs> eh? Right. But hey, we need to know what's going on with you. Oh, yeah. And related to the uh, changes. I drink four, like four <laughs> bottles on <laughs> Saturday. This is the, the, the oh, tennis God. chapter. Yeah. <laughs> You're putting my tennis people in trouble. Eh? Uh, eh, please, we do our own confessions. I drink like four bottles on Saturday. I'm assuming this is beer. Okay, mm -hmm. but it is only Saturday, so I've realized that my BP is always high on Sundays, sometimes Monday, yeah. even with medication. You see, now he has his answer already, eh? <laughs> he has to stop. William, uh, we need to understand whether your attraction is the tennis or the, the, the follow up. <laughs> eh? Okay, but uh, we need to sort that out. Is that is Dr. Tobo the Tobo? Of what do you know fame in those days in the 80s? Did you used to do what do you know? Yes. Hey, I see. They were twins. They were brothers or twins? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bernard and Benjamin. Yeah? Twins. One, yes. One is a urologist, mm -hmm. okay, who's also been on this show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So they are twice. <laughs> eh? Okay. They were great minds. They still are. Okay. This is from Fed Bafi of Oyarifa S. Abeku. Mamin Kazna. Eh? Anyway, happy to know. Right. Not a fantastic show. Okay. Next slide, please, Abeku. Uh, Abeku is bullying me today. Good afternoon, Not a Learning a lot from the doctors in the studio. Happy birthday to my son, Ayemi Ohene Yao Ofosu of St. Albans Anglican School, Community One, Tema. God bless and provide and protect him enormously. And may he live to fulfill his purpose for you. That is for God. From mom, dad, and your brothers and sisters. Okay, great. Right. Uh, I stopped the medication and switch to alternatives such as exercise and beetroot. The pressure range is now is below 140, 90. Am I safe? Chief from Boma, so he stopped, okay, and saying he's not doing medications, he's doing lifestyle and beetroot. Speak to, oh, Abeku, is this the same thing? No. <sighs> okay. Am I safe? Chief from Boma, so he's taking a decision. He switched. <laughs> Stopped and switched. No. Right? And the alternatives are exercise and beetroot. Mm, so he comes in. We confirm. So one thing we can do is, is to let him have a BP profiling down. He checks his BP, uh, BP at the same time of day um, 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 for um, 
consecutive days or we we send him for what we call ambulatory blood pressure monitoring okay. where we we'll track the bp throughout the whole day yeah and then uh, brings it back the data and we analyze mm -hmm. and if the data shows that the bp is truly below um, within normal range or below normal then uh, whatever he's doing we will we'll say that it's working but mm -hmm. if it is not then uh, we'll have to encourage uh, him to okay. to get into the better control range right doc as you wanted to add something yeah we see this sometimes they stop their medications the bps are okay for some time we don't know when he stopped their medication but mm -hmm. sometimes the medications they have half lives yeah so they're still in the system working and with time your bp may shoot up so like my colleague is saying the monitoring is important yeah so i would say you're not safe you need to you keep monitoring your blood pressure and then talk to your doctor i want to know why you stopped and um if there's anything that we can switch we'll switch for you but yep. um it's, it's dangerous. It's dicey. It's dicey it's what dicey. he's doing. Yeah. Right. We've seen this and then they will come in and you become a pharmacist overnight. I'm telling right? you, the BPs can shoot. And then mm -hmm. they will recommend to other people. <laughs> Jai Wei, beetroot. It's cheaper. Yeah. It's this, it's There's that. no and research see, showing the, that. The, the cause controls effect BP. relationship between medication or regimen of medication and the outcomes is something that must be measured properly. Yes. And validly. Mm -hmm. You take this and you say, ah, this is responsible for this. Uh, it may be spurious. Not. So mm -hmm. be mindful, be careful. It's your health we're talking about. Good afternoon, Doc. My reading this morning was 175124. I'm taking Exfog. Uh, my BP is still high. My question is, how do I get it down further? I've done ECG and all the tests and my organs are okay. I want to know if blood groups have their different pressure levels okay so he's on s4 which is a combination mm -hmm. uh, uh his bp is high this morning to read specifically what he says mm -hmm. i don't know whether it's been high all the time uh but he wants it to go down further he's told yes. from tests that organ functioning so far has not been compromised mm. what do we say yeah but the but the blood pressure yeah. um that it's is high. being recorded is not um good yeah. yeah so um the medication um in in giving the medication we have to modify the the drug uh, options for him by either adding one on uh, an extra drug in order to bring the BP to um, um, within normal or within range. Okay. So he has to see his doctor and then they review the drug that he's on mm -hmm. because probably the dose that he's on is not adequate mm -hmm. and will have to either be increased yeah. or um, a third drug be added on. Yeah. We have okay. various drug groups yes. that yeah, sure. we get about six or seven different yeah. Uh, hypertension medications that work through different mechanisms yeah. so and uh, those and, options and even are the s fog has different strengths and combinations strengths exactly and so you might go there and say s fog they'll ask you which strength which Ten. strength yes okay so yeah. probably he's on the lower strength yeah if he's at the ceiling then it means that we'll have to probably add exactly. a third drug okay. yeah. to it i hope this is helpful and there there mm -hmm. are some people with um, resist something we call resistant hypertension oh, they right. are very yeah. difficult yeah. to control yeah. blood yeah. pressure so okay if you fall in that group, do not despair. The, we can titrate your medications and add on as has been said. <coughs> okay. It's control. been on the news. This is from the day in Maryland. Uh, that's home BP measurements aren't done properly. And most, if not all of these apps readings as well, thus inaccurate, uh, thus giving us inaccurate readings. Therefore, there are designated places for people to go to take their BP readings accurately. Does this apply in Ghana? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, a lot of noise is being made about home BP measurements because um, we feel like it gives us a better profile or picture of the person. Yeah. But then outside, they, they have developed apps and other things that you can use. Mm -hmm. We don't have those apps here. Here, yeah. you take it manually and then record for us. Mm -hmm. And we still use it. Yeah. So we educate the patients on how to do it mm -hmm. and then... Um, we compare it to the in-office ones, yeah. if it's comparable, yeah. And we, we then accepted. also, most people are aware, most of our pharmacies, community pharmacies and so on, uh, our clinics and things mm. are available. Yes. yes. Okay. Once you notice, even in your home measurements, a change or a spike that is irregular, mm -hmm. right? It has to be verified. Exactly. Right? Sometimes I see something and I say, hey, 
uh, you sent me this reading. Can you take it again? Yes. Most people are encouraged to take two readings, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Uh, uh, space them apart and be able to get a certain 